my son asked me to slip in a quick job uh, on the K&T in between uh, working on my collet nuts. So I had the first collet nut loctited to the spindle threads and got this uh, locating shoulder done and it's to the finished thickness. So uh, once I heated that up and took it off, I'm gonna move on to this guy. This is an intake manifold from a Volkswagen TDI uh, 1.9 uh, liter engine and it's a real tall um, manifold that does not fit under the hood of his Spitfire conversion so he cut this thing off I think just with a reciprocating saw or an angle grinder and there is just enough overlap between these bosses on the rear and the ports to clamp it vertically in the big 8 inch vise and then he wants this top edge taken down basically to the um, witness line here in the casting and he's going to aluminum weld a new fabricated top portion to this but he wants a nice clean surface so we're going to go ahead and put this in the vise and it gives us an opportunity to use the rotary head to um, mill that out. I don't have a cutter wide enough to come across this in one pass so what I'm going to do is center it up on the center line of this, offset the head probably about, uh, looks like about a half to three quarters of an inch, and just use the X-travel of the table to come down, and then I'm gonna use the rotary head to swing 180 and come across the backside and back around. And we'll just do that maybe quarter inch increments until this is milled down to a nice point. So uh, should be fun to uh, do that without having to move the Y, the y uh, table back and forth. Let's move over to the mill. That's more solid than it looks. Checking my travel here, travel limits, make sure I can reach the end. I have the cutter offset 5 eighths of an inch, which centers it up on that back web. And then when I swing a 180 at the end of uh, the manifold and come across the front, uh, it should be centered up on that web. Looks like I'm just going to make it. Okay, I think we got everything set, so we'll turn the cutter on. Swinging the head around to 180. Table click, clicked out, so continue on around. And that dog is kicking out a little bit too soon. We need another half inch, I'd say.
a little bit more travel. The trick that I'm using here, I'm actually going to use again uh, to take advantage of the offset of the head when it comes time to machine uh, face a cylinder head. The table on the KT is 16 by 36, so this is actual size. And the X travel is 18 inches and the Y travel is 12 inches. So um, we can put the spindle over top of any area within that inner rectangle. But what do you do when you have a cylinder head like from a big block board? It's probably closer to 24 inches long and you wanted to face that. Well, one thing you could do is that you could shift it over, face part way across, then shift the, uh, the head over, but you don't have to do that with the K&T. What I can do is run the travel all the way to the left, which brings our spindle right here. Then I offset the spindle by four inches. And then the center of the spindle is here. So by positioning the head correctly and then running a spindle offset to the right, I can take an eight inch fly cutter. I'll just draw a circle here. And I can machine across. And then when I get about midway across the head, just back the table off swing the head around 180 degrees until my axis is pointing this way and then continue the cut and that end brings me up uh, to where this entire head will clean up so I've effectively taken my 18 inches of X table travel and uh, changed it to 26 inches utilizing the, the 4 inch offset of, of the head same goes for the y-axis. If I need to do something and machine it way on the front edge of the part, I can actually, you know, put the spindle here, offset it four inches, and I can come out board of the, of the uh, main table by about two inches and come inboard of the table by about two inches using the you know the the nine degree points on the head and where I do my machining so I've, I've done this trick a little bit in the past to position things along the y-axis have not done it along the x-axis but I will be resurfacing some cylinder heads in the near future and uh, I'm going to make a big eight inch fly cutter for that and then do a do a pass uh, essentially in one shot, one setup without having to break it down and move it on the table. Next pass we should have it milled all the way around to the same level. The dog slipped here. We'll come back and get the rest of that boss on the final cleanup cut.
Okay, I'm going to do about a 5,000th cleanup cut to see if we can improve the surface finish of that a little bit. Hmm. Not much, but it's a little better. Well, it came out really nice. The uh, 5 thousandths finish pass made a real difference in the surface quality. I think there was a lot of chips getting stuck in the flutes on the end of the mill, so that uh, just shot it with some WD-40 on that final pass to slick things up a bit. And that is pretty much dead flat. Almost hinges at the one-third points right off the mill well hope you enjoyed that uh, little exercise in milling a profile without changing the x-axis going around the 180s with the head and uh, check out my son's channel which is called uh, the facility and he'll probably be putting a video up showing how he will fabricate a top half to this. Till then, uh, stay safe and thank you for watching on Engineer's Workshop.